Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, it's time to build another project, and what I would like to build, and I've been thinking about this for a little while now, is a, a very simple digital modes transceiver. Um, and what I mean by simple is that I do want to utilize the computer to do all the, the computations for the, for, for the particular mode. Um, I'm not looking to implement in the transceiver itself any kind of um, SDR or any other kind of sort of logic in that respect. Um, there are some very good examples of digital modes transceivers out there. Uh, you know, the, AS, the ADX-S, uh, the QDX are a couple of good examples there. Um, I'm not trying to emulate those. I'm just trying to um, build a, I don't want to say cheap and cheerful, but a, a simple little transceiver um, that I haven't done before, which should be quite interesting. Again, uh, nice and simple, that's, the, that's going to be the aim. Um, as I've said many times, the, the whole idea of these videos is to try and encourage others to give homebrew a go. So um, that's my philosophy, and that's what I'm going to do for this particular one. So it, by way of, of functions and modes, um, I'm going to support both 40 and 20 meters. Um, and in terms of modes themselves, uh, Whisper, JS8, Cool, and FT8 will be will be the starters. Uh, in terms of the way the modes will work, I'm, I'm thinking about just a simple push button switch that just cycles between um, each time you push this, the button. You know, 40 Whisper, 40 JS8, 40 FT8, 20 Whisper, 20 JS8, and 20 FT8, and and, and around and around it goes. So a very simple user interface. Uh, in terms of actually displaying to the user what the mode is. Um, I think I'll just use a, a small little OLED display. Got two options here, the 0.96, uh, I think it's 64 by uh, 128, and this one's the half the resolution on the uh, the height. Uh, I've used this one before, and I thought it was a little bit noisy, but I think in this particular application it'll be fine. Um, and I'll probably end up using this little one here. Again, slightly smaller in real, well, you know, arguably it's the same in real estate. But uh, you know, I don't need to display very much. But it's going to be one of these two, one of these two screens itself. Um, in terms of the setup, to keep this really simple, I'm going to have all the computation, like I said, done on the computer. And what I'm not going to do is feed the microphone and the audio through to the transceiver. What I'm going to use, um, what I'm going to try and use, are these really inexpensive uh, USB sound cards. And actually have this inside the radio itself and just have the USB going between this and the computer. Um, hopefully these will work. They're you know, dirt cheap. This was 68 cents and this was $1.20. So very, very inexpensive. Hopefully they'll work. If not, then I'll, you know, I'll go up slightly, slightly uh, more expensive. But I'm thinking that um, they should, hopefully, fingers crossed, work. So like I say, have that sitting inside the radio and I'll just solder directly to the pads here for both the, uh, the receive and the transmit. So that's what I'm thinking for that. So, uh, by way of, we sort of talk transmit for a start. So, in fact, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk receive and I'll get on to transmit. I was initially thinking that I would use or have this configured as a super heterodyne receiver. And I was thinking about using a, an AM crystal filter. AM because it's 6 kilohertz wide, which meant if I had positioned that um, audio pass bands in the center, I'd, um, I'd definitely make sure that I wasn't going to be attenuating the edges um, of the, the audio pass band to maximize reception. I've gone away from that idea. I think what I'll do is I'll use what I did for uh, the Whisper beacon that I made some time ago. Um, this particular one was using a, an AD9850 as the um, frequency generation device there and I was using frequency shift keying to produce the output RF. In other words, I was having the microcontroller tell the 9850, this one here, uh, this is the frequency I want you to do at any one point in time and then that frequency was subtly changing uh, as required for the whisper tones. Uh, in other words, it was frequency shift keying, it was direct. There was no translation from a, a baseband signal um, through some kind of um, product um, modulator uh, through up to the RF, it was it was done directly. So I'm going to do that again, and uh, rather than using an AD9850, uh, AD I'm going to use uh, an SI5351. Um, and the reason there being, A, this is quite a bit cheaper, 
the 9850 is around $15, this is $1.20, and uh, it has the three clock outputs, which will be useful. I can dedicate one for the transmit FSK, then I can uh, dedicate these two here for the quadrature uh, product detector, or the TALO detector, which I'm thinking about using. I, I used one of those um, some years ago, and I'm sort of quite keen to sort of revisit that, especially with these sorts of devices here. By having the two outputs, okay, I'll get to that shortly, let's just pause there. Okay, so, uh, receive will be, like I say, a, uh, a TALO detector, so if we have this sitting here, the TALO detector has RF coming in, and it uh, converts that directly down to baseband, down to audio frequency. Uh, the, to drive that, because this is essentially a MUX, requires uh, four times the radio frequency um, signal and quadrature. So the, the clocks, so one will be going high, the other one will be going low. Now that was being done way back when uh, the Taylor detector first came out using a separate piece of logic down here, data logic, to produce those two quadrature uh, clock signals for the MUX. Um, the beauty is of the SI5351 um, is that can be generated directly off the chip. So we can have this one uh, going positive and at the same time this one going negative. So um, that will do away with one set of, 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 of data logic in the receiver. So that's what I'm thinking of there. And I'm, uh, I've done that before so that should work again. Uh, in terms of that audio frequency there, uh, I think, well, it would be interesting to see if that will be at a high enough level to go directly into the, the microphone side of the USB sound card. Uh, if it's not, then some form of amplification before it does. And what I'm thinking about using is a, uh, a low noise amplifier like the NE5534, which I've used before for... Uh, audio amplifiers, so I'll probably look to use um, that if needed. So we'll try going directly for a start, see how we get on. If it doesn't work, then we'll, we'll amplify it. Um, and that's pretty well lit for receive. Um, thinking about what may be required for uh, a bandpass filter there, either bandpass or utilizing. A, uh, a low pass filter, the same low pass filter for, that's going to be used for the transmit side of the house. So still thinking about what's the best way for for that. Um, so the jury is still out on that one. On the transmit side, we'll have, like I say, uh, the SI5351 utilizing one of these outputs to generate a, a single frequency, and that single frequency is then varying in frequency uh, in other words, FSK, frequency shift keying, um, in sync with and being generated from what the computer is telling it to do um, for that particular mode. So what will happen is, and what I'm planning to do, is have the earphone side, or the speaker side of the sound card, is audio frequency coming out. And the plan is to have that going into the Arduino, into an analog port, and then have code in here measuring that frequency and determining what that frequency is and then having that uh, then drive the SI5351 to, to generate directly the, the output frequency so the translation from baseband to RF will essentially be done in software on the microprocessor so that should be quite interesting um, I haven't done that before, so that should be um, yeah, not, not certainly not impossible, and I think this will certainly be fast enough to do that. So that's what we do, and like I say, that'll drive the if the SI5351, one of those particular outputs there, to generate the uh, the frequency we need and have that varying uh, in sync with what's being commanded by the audio frequency from the computer. I hope that makes sense. It does in my mind. Right. In terms of amplification. Um, Ideally, want to try and get to around 5 watts. Don't need anything more than that for, for these sorts of digital modes, being quite low power or weak signal. Uh, in terms of an amp, 
I think I'm going to use what I used for, or something similar to what I used for this particular CW transmitter here. It was the same sort of arrangement. We had the SI5351 generating a clock signal, or more the point, an RF signal in line with the, the CW key. So that again was, I don't want to say it's frequency shift keying because it wasn't actually shifting in frequency, it was a single frequency that was then being fed through a nice efficient class E amplifier made up of, in this particular case, it was three BS-170s. Um, I don't know it's going to be the same configuration for the RF amp, but certainly looking to use uh, BS-170s um, as the, uh, the, 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 the device for providing that amplification. Probably three or four in parallel, I'd say. Uh, again, nothing new there, it's been done before, so I'll just look to um, find out you know, a good way of doing that. And then some form of low pass filter after that, just to clean it up before it goes out on the antenna. And like I said before, potentially looking to share that low pass filter between um, the transmit and the receive side of the house uh, in lieu of, say, a band pass filter. The other option is over here I have a, a band pass filter which will serve purposes the same purpose. It will it'll attenuate the unwanted uh, higher frequency harmonics um, and at the same time on the receive side of the house uh, attenuates um, the out of band signals that we don't want. So still toying with the idea if it's going to be a band pass or a low pass filter for this application here and here. Um, and I think I've probably rambled on as much as I need to there, so um, just to sort of reiterate, um, no smarts in the radio itself when it comes to SDR, um, I'll, I'll leave that to the computer to do that, uh, not looking to feed back um, quadrature signals back to the computer, he said thinking out loud, um, I'm sort of thinking, so coming back to that quadrature detector, this MUX here, this actually produces two outputs. It will it'll, it'll produce um, the I and the Q, so the in phase and the quadrature signal down at baseband. Uh, for an SDR radio, you would have those both going in, and then through the, through some maths, you can then, if you're looking at say um, single sideband, you could then attenuate, uh, or more the point, eliminate the um, the unwanted sideband. I think in my application here. I was initially thinking about descending one of those channels directly out through the sound card back up to the computer. Um, I'm pretty sure most of the software doesn't need I and Q to do the demodulation. Um, having said that, this is a stereo sound card. We've already got I and Q coming out, so for the sake of putting in a second um, op amp and then having that feeding through the, the other channel say left and right um, that may not be you know that, that, that may be something to think about what I'll initially do is I'll play around with just having a single channel going through um, and then go from there but you know, that would save having to put in a uh, another op amp down here for I'm not quite sure what additional gain is because I'm pretty sure most of the software is quite happy just to receive uh, I think I'm correct in saying that, just to receive a single channel audio um, on the receive. Might have double checked that one. Either way, it'd be simple enough to, simple enough to implement um, the two channels, the I and Q, if need, if need be. Uh, transmits a different side of the house, just a single channel coming through that's been detected um, by the microprocessor. Uh, in terms of TR switching, didn't talk about that. Um, I am not going to implement for simplicity uh, cat control, so I'm not going to have sitting on that microcontroller um, any kind of um, code looking to decode uh, cat commands coming from the software. Um, again, that's just to keep things nice and simple. Um, so therefore, I'll have no option but to go with Vox. So I, it'll have to be some kind of Vox detector that when audio is coming in, A, the microprocessor is determining that yes, there is actually a signal of interest coming in. Um, I could have a digital Vox through here, or I could pick on that analog, uh, have that going through some kind of detector to detect that there is actually audio on that, 
and then have that switch the Vox. So not quite sure if it's going to be, oh, let's say, analog Vox versus a digital Vox. Um, the digital one might be quite interesting. Uh, one could argue, uh, yes, I think I'm, yeah, certainly on, because this, this is transmit audio here from the computer. If the software is on receive, then theoretically there's no varying audio going out of the um, the, 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 the transmit side of the sound card. So therefore, we could have some kind of logic in here saying, hmm, there's been no there's been no variation in frequency coming in, so therefore we must be uh, on receive. And then, if it was to vary, then have some kind of digital vox coming out. What would be interesting in that particular case is how fast we can then switch to transmit uh, and not lose um, any of that of that data, so to speak. Uh, having said that, yeah, that would be interesting. Um, I'm just sort of thinking out loud here. This is how these videos work. I don't actually. There's no script. It's just me talking. So uh, that might be an interesting one to sort of explore. Um, clearly, there's going to be have to be some kind of switching for the uh, the filters. Um, if I'm not going to Yes, it's going, to be, it's going to be interesting. If, if yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll pause there because I, I, I was sort of just rambling, thinking about the the, the 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 transition from transmit to receive. If there's going to be any need to switch those particular filters between the transmit to receive side, but I, what I could what I could envisage is a similar arrangement. that say the codan and many other transceivers use where the uh, low pass filter sits straight off the antenna and is therefore shared between the transmit and the receive side. There's, there's no switching of that particular filter because it's just sitting there straight away um, next to the antenna. So that may actually turn out to be this one or similar to this one here. Anyway, so that's something to think about. Um, right, so I'm definitely starting to ramble now, so I think that's time to to say 73. So anyway, that's just my thoughts and ideas. Um, just, yeah, just sort of laying it out there. Uh, feel free to throw some ideas, if you wish, uh, into the comments. And I will put some more thought into this, and then um, start into some coding. I think I might start off, just for interest's sake, uh, getting this to output um, the frequency that's being sent from the computer. That might be sort of a starting point, a bit of a play around with that. Anyway, I'll say 73 there, and uh, we shall see you next time. Cheers all.